I'm pretty excited about Disney's new online video streaming service, and I think as filmmakers we can learn something from it. Hey everyone, Camber here, showing you how to use your camera to make good videos, so if you're new, consider subscribing. Netflix has pretty much been the top online video streaming service ever since the company shifted its focus away from sending DVDs in the mail to building its online platform. And sure, there have been other companies like Amazon Prime Video, but none really seem to measure up to Netflix until now. Disney has now evolved with the times and released their own online video streaming platform, Disney Plus, for only $6.99 per month, which is looking to be quite successful with over 10 million subscribers in the first day and an over 8% stock price jump. I know. Why didn't I buy Disney stock before this was released? So let's look at what you get with the Disney Plus streaming service, as well as some takeaways and ideas for filmmakers on the future of video distribution. Disney Plus is centered around family-friendly content for entertainment with a rating up to PG-13. And this content includes Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilm, and National Geographic. But let's take a closer look for a minute because we're not just talking about a small database here from each of these categories. After opening our account, my wife and I were really excited to see just about every old Disney and Pixar movie we could think of that we saw growing up, as well as new titles, new Disney originals, Disney Junior shows, and even older shows like Boy Meets World that I loved watching growing up. And with Marvel, you have almost all the movies in the Avengers series, as well as a ton of animated Marvel movies movies and shows. And the same goes for Star Wars with all the original and spin-off movies available, as well as many, many animated Star Wars shows. And a quick scroll through the National Geographic section shows many interesting titles that look like a great viewing experience for me and the kids. And all this for $6.99 per month? I mean, that's a no-brainer for me, especially considering the rising costs of Netflix. But Disney also owns Hulu, which you have the option to bundle with Disney Plus and ESPN Plus for $12.99 per month and have access to all the family-friendly content on Disney+, Plus, the more adult-oriented content on Hulu, and sports entertainment from ESPN. Sounds like a good deal either way, right? But how do you access it? Well, you can go to DisneyPlus.com and start a free 7-day trial and have the option of signing up at $6.99 per month for Disney+, Plus, or paying a full year subscription for $69.99, which comes out to a $13.89 savings per year. And you can download the Disney Plus app on smartphones, tablets, and Apple TVs, or just stream straight from the Disney Plus website on your computer. The content is always ad-free, and you're able to download any TV show or movie. And this is huge for me, because I travel a lot and I'm on airplanes a lot, and Netflix has always annoyed me when they only let you download certain titles, and it's usually nothing I want to watch. But with Disney, you can download any of the titles, shows, or movies, and you're able to watch from four different devices at once, so no issues with watching multiple shows and movies in different places of the house. Now I was a little skeptical at first about signing up because I've always used Netflix and I didn't want to pay for another streaming service, but after signing up, I've actually been really impressed with everything Disney's doing with their streaming platform. And it got me thinking, what can we learn from this as filmmakers when it comes to evolving with the times with technology and how we have all these changes in video distribution? Since the 1970s, people have been buying or renting physical copies of movies, whether it be in VHS, DVD, or Blu-ray format. And once I had kids, I wanted them to see all the old Disney movies that I grew up with, but Disney has been particularly annoying when it comes to releasing these older films because the original plan was to keep them all locked in the vault and only release them once every seven years so that it would be a new experience for every generation. Now they've finally done away with that and with this change in their video strategy, Disney was able to pull in over 10 million subscribers the first day, which translates to over $70 million per month for the company. Though I'm sure there will be a decline in physical and digital movie sales for Disney. However, I can't even remember the last time I went to a store and actually bought a physical disc. And we often just wait till stuff comes out on Netflix anyways when we don't go see it at the theater. So what does this mean for you as a filmmaker when it comes to distributing your content? Don't feel like the traditional ways of video distribution are your only means of getting your content seen. I mean, 10 to 20 years ago, if I had made a film, I would have had to spend money to rent a place, try to attract an audience so they could see it, or spend money sending it off to film festivals and hope it gets accepted. But now, I can make a film and find an audience right here on YouTube while getting paid to do that. I released my latest short film, Coming Home, a few weeks ago, and it has just over 5,000 views and is still climbing. 
And yeah, 5,000 may not seem like that many views when compared to other popular YouTube channels that are getting millions of views per video. However, looking back to that scenario of 15 years ago, trying to get 5,000 people all packed into one place to see this film was pretty unthinkable. And I was able to finance my current short film that I'm going to be releasing soon with money that I made from my previous films. And I've also been really inspired by Darius Britt, who released his self-finance feature film, Unsound, on YouTube that has over 100,000 views now. I've always wanted to make a movie, and after seeing that, I finally started working on a script for my own feature-length film. So think outside the box on how you can find your audience and get your content seen. And just like Disney finally adapted their video distribution strategy to become a major competitor to the top video streaming services, watch how things evolve over time and don't hesitate to be the first to jump in on those trends so that you can be an expert in that area and get your content seen. Online video streaming seemed like a foreign concept to most 25 years ago, and now it's a part of everyday life. So who knows, maybe you might come up with the next video streaming innovation. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.